Welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at the orbits of planets that orbit multiple stars, well predominantly double stars, and they're not all created equally. So depending on the orbit the planet has around the star will depend on the outcome for the planet. You know, is it habitable, is it stable or not? But going back to the solar system and single star systems, an orbit of a planet is pretty much around the star. It doesn't really change much, they can't have too many different configurations there, it pretty much goes around the star. It can be elliptical or inclined, but that's pretty much it. Now we have detected numerous planets around binary stars. We've actually discovered planets around more than two stars, but for this video we're just concerned with binary stars. And we want to have a look at the sort of orbit that that planet can have in those systems. So the first one is a p-type. So in this particular orbit, the planet would orbit around the outside of the two stars. So the two stars are orbiting a common centre of mass, they're kind of orbiting the, almost themselves, and then the planet orbits around the outside. So this would be known as a true circumbinary orbit because it's going around the outside of the two stars. There's also S-type. Now S-type is where the planet orbits one of the stars, and then those two stars orbit each other. So this is a little bit more chaotic than the other one because it's orbiting a star and then those two stars then orbit each other as well. Now P-type are probably the most stable and if they're far enough from the stars then they don't receive a strong gravitational tug or perturbation that will destabilize them. So as long as they're far enough away, they can be quite stable. And generally, if that planet star distance is two to four times the star star distance, then they can be considered stable. So in this configuration, you really want the planet quite a way out from the two stars so that they're not being gravitationally disturbed as those stars orbit each other. Now the S type are less stable. And in this configuration here, you want it the other way round. You actually want the planet closest to the first star, because otherwise the perturbation from the second star will destabilise it. So actually, it needs to be almost in the, under the influence of the first star more than the second one. And if the stars are close to each other, then actually that's going to destabilise as well. So actually, what you really want here is the stars to be separated quite a bit, and the planet to be close to one of the stars, and that will be more stable. Now, P-type can have a habitable zone. So the habitable zone where the planet is, where it can possibly have liquid water on its surface, is going to be outside of the two stars here. So you can have a habitable zone there, and it can be stable. So it's actually quite interesting here, because then you have the potential for habitable planets orbiting a binary star system. Now S-type can also have habitable zones. It would be better suited for planets that are around stars that have a larger separation because otherwise they're going to be destabilised and actually the, the contribution from the second star is going to alter things. So actually this is not necessarily a true representation of what the habitable zone might look like. It's just an illustration really. But they can have habitable zones but they're better suited for being further separated in the stars. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos.